What's up friends, it's T. Rowan, and I know that I've been absent from YouTube a good bit. I've been dealing with some higher priority life and career circumstances, but the feedback that I've received from everyone regarding this power chair project has been enormous. And I know that I have to finish it for you all as much as myself now. So you're gonna get one video per year. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I, I promise I'm gonna prioritize this now. I'm going to finish this very soon. It's gone on too long. As promised, for part two, we're gonna discuss the electrical design and software for the spazzy build before we actually implement it on the chair itself. This video is gonna be more on the technical side, so I apologize if you click this video expecting power wheelchair burnouts and are greatly disappointed. We're not quite there yet. And just a heads up, this design is going to change over time as the software is refined, electrical components are replaced or upgraded after testing, etc. So make sure to use GitHub as the source of truth with this project. Here's the link here. And since this is an open source project, if you'd like to add improvements or contribute to the project, please let me know. I'm not a software developer, so the code that I usually write is written for functionality over form. The ultimate goal here is to make a minimum viable product and get it working as quickly as possible and make it better over time. Let's get into it. A little bit of background on this project. I was given a power wheelchair with a bad motor controller by a friend, and I decided that it would be fun to replace the broken control system with my own. Originally, I wanted to design a motor controller from scratch, but decided that in the best interest of getting the overall project done, I should just use off-the-shelf components first until they break. So with this new design, we're replacing the old motor controller, the joystick module, batteries, et cetera, in favor of our own control system, motor controllers, and battery pack. The goal here is to keep the system as cheap as possible while making it rugged enough to withstand continuous use. The overall design architecture looks like this. Let's go over each of the parts of this diagram. All right, what are we looking at here? Let's look at this diagram. So we've got a custom 48 volt battery pack, and that's going to power the motor controllers and feed the DC to DC converter that steps the voltage down 5 volts DC to power all of the electronic circuits. The original Jazzy power chair used a couple of 12 volt lead acid batteries in series for a total of 24 volts DC. Now the reason I chose to build this battery pack myself is A, because I wanted a higher voltage for more top speed, 48 volts in this case, and B, I need to be able to output 120 amps of current, which is the maximum current capability for two of these motor controllers, 60 amps each. This is gonna be a true six kilowatt system, which is gonna be awesome for this power chair. It's like, it's gonna be badass. If I were to use lead acid batteries for this, it would get very heavy and take up way too much space. So I've decided to use Molasell P26-18650 cells, which can output up to 35 amps max. With five of these in parallel, that gives me a max current capability of 175 amps, but I'll never use more than 120 amps. And I'm using an A&T 150 amp battery management system, which has Bluetooth capability built in. This way I can protect the battery and keep track of the health of the cells, the state of charge, etc. Now I designed this battery pack based on the limits of the Amazon motor controllers that I'm using, not based on any wheelchair dynamics. So it's gonna be interesting to see where this gets us. I think it's gonna be great. I'll make a separate video where I actually spot weld the cells, build the battery pack, so be on the lookout for that this year, I promise. Hopefully, like, next week. All right, let's move on to the motor controller. Now, the motor controller is a generic brushed motor controller that I found on Amazon. It's about 20 bucks. It's cheap enough to try out and potentially blow up. It claims to have an input voltage of 10 to 55 volts DC and a maximum current output of 60 amps and a continuous current of 40 amps, which at 48 volts translates to almost three kilowatts of power max and two kilowatts of power continuous. I did a little bit of reverse engineering to find out that it uses two relays for the forward and reverse directions. And these are feeding an H-bridge circuit that controls the direction of the motor. Now, the relays feed power to the H-bridge circuit, which is a set of MOSFETs, and it's important to never let these relays be energized at the same time. Otherwise, you risk short-circuiting the MOSFETs, and that's commonly referred to as shoot-through, which will almost certainly destroy your system. You're gonna let the magic smoke out if this happens. Ask me how I know. Seriously, this one is trashed. 
Now I've got protection built into the software that prevents the forward and reverse states from ever being active at the same time. So I should be able to prevent this from happening. Now the throttle that comes with this motor controller uses a potentiometer, but I'm gonna be simulating the output of this pot using pulse width modulated signal from the microcontroller. This generic controller doesn't exactly have glowing reviews on Amazon with some of the most notable reviews saying, I don't know, died within two hours, hot garbage, blew up and stay away being some of the most notable reviews. I'm excited to see this motor controller in action, even if it's only for a couple of hours or a couple of seconds. All right, moving on. The DC to DC converter and five volt supply. So this is my homebrew design. I made this DC to DC converter because I work with battery systems a lot and it allows me to output five volts DC from 10 to 100 volts DC, which is a pretty good range. And it outputs about one and a half amps. So I can power most of the electronics that I ever use to interface with battery powered projects on my e-bikes, electric vehicles, yada, yada. So this will power the microcontroller and sensor circuits, which speaking of, let's talk about the microcontroller that I'm using. So this is the brains behind the operation right here. This is an e ESP32 microcontroller. It's got two cores, a 240 megahertz clock speed, built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, and just about every kind of input and output capability that you need. They're great for just about anything you want. They're fast. The real reason that I'm using this is because I've got a bag of these and they're extremely cheap. But looking towards the future, this chipset could give us the ability to interface with the power chair using a Bluetooth app for metrics and control, remote control, you know, that'd be pretty cool. I'm using VS Code and the platform IO plugin with standard Arduino libraries to accelerate the development of this software. And next, we're gonna talk about one of the most important parts between your brain and the motors of this power chair, and that is the joystick. Now, I've gotten some flack for choosing an XY axis potentiometer joystick over a Hall Effect version, but I chose the potentiometer because of its low cost and ability to read resistance changes and translate that to percentages in the the XY axis. I agree that a hall sensor is ideal, and here's a challenge for all of you out there. Find me a hall effect joystick that gives me the same ability as this potentiometer and costs less than $50. I'll do some deeper digging myself for this, but they're usually not cheap. I've been using this PlayStation 2 joystick for testing purposes, but plan to use this larger joystick on the actual power chair. I'll just have to 3D print a custom knob for it and make it more user friendly, but I mean, this costs about 14 bucks on Amazon. So we're just feeding this joystick a 3.3 volt signal and we're sending the output from each potentiometer back to the microcontroller to process the X and Y axis values. Another important sensor that we're using is the Bosch b 055 Absolute Orientation Sensor. And we can measure nine degrees of freedom of movement with this thing. This wonderful device blends data from an accelerometer, magnetometer, and gyroscope into a three-axis output. We're specifically using angle data based on 360 degrees of rotation. This allows us to keep track of the heading of the power chair for the control system, which we're going to talk about momentarily. This also gives us potential to implement some interesting safety concepts later on, like anti-tipping functions based on roll and pitch data. All right, and then we've got a relay board. I'm sure some of you have seen this. Someone has seen this, man. There's some of the cheapest relays you can get online. We're using a relay board to control the larger forward and reverse relays on each motor controller. They need 12 volts DC to switch the coils, and we can't do that directly with a microcontroller voltage output of 3.3. So I know this is kind of redundant, but it's just for the prototype. We'll find a better way to do this later on. Also not pictured here is a circuit breaker. So we've got a circuit breaker for protecting the high voltage side, and it's rated to 100 amps. It's commonly used on boats. Uh, it should be fine for quick bursts of peak current as we won't continually run at 125 amps. So this is just to keep the system from burning down. All right, let's move into the meat and potatoes of the control system. How are we moving this power wheelchair in a way that we expect and preventing our demise upon the first test drive? Our power wheelchair is what is called a non-holonomic system, which means that it is constrained in how it can move its position. For example, if your vehicle is located at, I don't know, position A over here, and you want to get to position B, you can't just slide straight to the position unless you've got crab walking capabilities. 
you're gonna have to take a non-linear path to get there. This is non-holonomic. And what that means for us is that we're at one point and we wanna to get to another, so we have to have a way to control the power wheelchair to get there. And the way to do that is by using a differential drive control scheme, which will vary the right and left wheel velocities to control the tra tra trajectory of the system. Since we're not making a robot yet and we don't care much about path planning, I'm just gonna use the yaw angle feedback instead of wheel velocities. So this yaw angle angle feedback will be used for the control system to calculate an error, which is the difference between the desired angle and the current angle. Now this error is used to speed the wheel velocity up or slow it down by varying the pulse width modulation output to the motor controller throttle input. Are you still with me? You, you, you good? All right, let's get into the control system algorithm and some of the code. Here's a basic control algorithm diagram that I made to show the operation and logic that's used by the current software. And again, as I've said, this is likely going to change as I make it better over time. The program goes through initialization and starts the run function. It then begins reading and processing the X and Y joystick inputs. The next step is where the decisions are made. As you can see, there's three possibilities here after reading the X and Y input. If both X and Y equal zero, then it means you're not moving the joystick and the power wheelchair should remain stopped and continue reading the X and Y inputs of the joystick. If the Y input is greater than zero or is less than zero, then you're commanding the power wheelchair forward or backward and it takes the next step in the logic tree. If the X axis is zero when you're commanding the chair forward or backward, then it is assumed that you would like to go straight. And the angle at that point in time is locked in. This is what I call angle lock. The angle lock value is used to control the wheel velocities to maintain that angle through an error that's calculated while the chair is in operation. If the error is positive, then the left wheel is slowed down to correct the trajectory and vice versa. Because if you wanna bias your vehicle left, you wanna slow the left wheel down, keep the right wheel at full speed, and you'll naturally begin to turn left. Okay, so let's keep looking at this logic tree. If Y is greater than zero or Y is less than zero, then you're commanding the power chair forward or backward. Then it's gonna look at this next part of the tree, which is the X command value. If the X axis is zero when you're commanding the chair forward or backward, then it is assumed that you wanna drive straight. Now, if the X input is not zero while we're commanding y greater than zero or y less than zero then we're commanding the chair to turn and it will adjust the turn to the right or the left depending on the x command input and let's look at the other side of this diagram where you see the zero point turn functions one of the cool features about two wheel differential drive systems is the ability to do zero point turns which i definitely wanted for this project so if you're commanding x to the left or the right and it equals 100% of the travel of the X direction on the joystick, while the Y input is zero, you will conduct a zero point turn to the right or the left. Of course, this could be problematic if you're traveling full speed forward and decide to perform a zero point turn immediately. And I'm gonna have to work to refine the command capabilities with respect to the vehicle dynamics, but nah, it's a problem for tomorrow. Guys, I could make an entire video based on just the software alone that would be, I don't know, uh, it, it, it could be a long video and maybe that'll happen in the future. All right, let's talk about testing. As I mentioned in the previous video, I started developing the power wheelchair on my desk using a couple of different test setups. The first setup is a differential drive robot chassis that I outfitted with an ESP32, angle sensor, joystick, and motor controller so that I could begin working on the control setup. Now this setup proved to be crucial in the beginning for vetting the software and catching bugs early. Here's some video of the operation of this differential drive robot. I used a power tether for this, which it was not great. It could be a lot better if I used a battery and boost converter setup, coupled with remote Bluetooth control to get rid of the joystick, but I just haven't had time to do it. I'll probably use this kind of model in the future and, and test that idea. Now, the second setup allowed me to begin interfacing with the relay board and the motor controller that I'm going to use on the real power chair. 
I learned that there was significant noise generated from switching the relay coils on and off with this relay board. And every time I switched the relays off, EMF was induced back into the microcontroller, which was actually resetting it each time I switched the relay coils off. So I suppressed that noise with some diodes and capacitors and kept it moving. I've only been using one half of the system here, but I'm confident that it's gonna work when I double it for the actual power chair. All right, moving on, let's talk about future steps. What are the next steps to work on? We wanna build a physical enclosure for all of these parts to bring them all together and be able to mount them into the chair. I need to build some circuitry to convert the zero to 3.3 pulse width modulation output from the microcontroller to a zero to five volt signal that is an input for the throttle of the motor controller. I've got a couple of ideas on how to do this. <clears throat> the analog joystick, I have a feeling that there's gonna be plenty of noise on this part of the system and I may have to implement a more robust, I don't know, digital communication method for transmitting joystick position to the controller. Maybe we're gonna use CAN bus to do this. You know, between what will probably become the joystick Bluetooth module, and communicate to the motor controller module. I don't know. Here's a diagram on what the next revision system may look like right here. All right, that's enough word vomit for one video. I was trying to keep this short as I always do and it, it's never short enough. What do you guys think? Leave a comment, let me know. Smash that like button if you're happy that I finally dropped the next video in the series or if you're pissed off that it's taken me this long to get to it. Oh yeah, one other thing I wanna mention, support for this project. So I've got a lot of feedback, not only for this project, but people asking about power wheelchairs in general. So I'm thinking about starting some kind of communication portal, maybe a Discord server or a WhatsApp chat, Slack, I don't know. Would you join if I did? The goal would be to bring everyone together uh, to the same place to help solve power wheelchair problems in general. After all, this is all open source. This is my gift to the community you know, to do as you please. I have no stake or financial gain in this whatsoever. And I wanna hear from you. Hit me up in the comments, but most importantly, hit me up on Instagram, direct message me if you want. I realized that there were direct messages that were requested and I had not looked at them. So hit me up over at troan underscore techworks. Send me a, a DM if you wanna talk, hit me up. All right guys, thanks for watching this video. I'm looking forward to part three. And I'm gonna keep doing my best to crank these videos out and keep this project moving. Thanks for your support and, and for your patience. Stay safe out there.